Happy Easter. May this season of new life and new beginnings bring you great joy in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. New life and new beginnings. There are moments in the life of our church when it becomes clear that we need to change in order to embrace new life and new beginnings. That has certainly been evident over the last year. We have all learned to adapt swiftly to the fluctuating circumstances of our everyday life because of the pandemic. Parishes large and small all over the diocese have made huge efforts to stay connected, preach the gospel, serve the most vulnerable, and offer ministry in new ways. Our capacity to adapt to new circumstances has successfully demonstrated our resilience and flexibility. Frankly, I think we've modeled real faithfulness to our creative, innovative God. It is also becoming more and more clear to me that we need to embrace a time of change in the way that we exercise Episcopal leadership in the Diocese of Toronto. For the past 40 years, we have been well served by the current College of Bishops and area system. At the same time, the diocese has changed significantly since the current structure was put into place. Consider, for example, that in 1980, there were 279 congregations in the diocese. Through closures and amalgamations, that number is now 199. That reduction in number of congregations may be discouraging to some, but not to me. It signals rather a need to change for the sake of new life and new beginnings. In early 2020, Bishop Peter Fenty let me know that he intended to retire in November of the same year. In the summer of 2020, Bishop Jenny Anderson began to discern a call to return to parish ministry as the rector of St. Paul's Blur Street. When two of our most important leaders perceive a change at hand, perhaps the Holy Spirit is nudging all of us. Is this the time to embrace a different model of Episcopal leadership? How do we structure ourselves to support the mission and ministry of the church for the next season? So I struck a small committee to report to me on some suggested ways forward. The resulting Episcopal Leadership Working Group started their work in June of 2020. And over the course of the next nine months, operating completely over Zoom, dedicated hundreds of hours to research and consultation. The resulting report is a remarkable achievement. I received the report on Shrove Tuesday and I have taken the whole of Lent to consider its content. It is now my very great pleasure to share this report with you, the Diocese of Toronto. I do so because I want to get your feedback and responses to the recommendations and to engage in a conversation with you in my town hall meetings over Zoom in May. When you read the report, you'll see that there are three proposed options for going forward. You will also see that there is no suggestion that we continue with the most recent status quo of a diocesan bishop with four area bishops. While that is the familiar model for most of us, the Diocese of Toronto at 182 years old has not always had so many bishops and we are not obliged by our canons or constitution to continue with that number. In looking at other dioceses of similar size and complexity, the ELWG asked important questions. How do these other dioceses function with fewer bishops and what can we learn from them? How can the functions of Episcopal ministry be redistributed across our system with different leaders raised up to support the bishops in their work? Personally, I'm leaning towards the, the report's option number three or some variation of it. To my eyes, option three is the most bold of the recommendations and the most exciting. It summons us to imagine moving together in one direction. It calls us to remain open, to harness leadership and gifts from east and west, north and south. It invites us to consider the needs, the hopes, and the opportunities of ministry and mission of the whole diocese. 
I firmly believe that we are in the right place to embrace such a change right now. But tell me what you think. Please read the report available on our website. A short questionnaire is available with the report, which we hope you will use to send in your initial reactions and questions. Then I hope you will register to join me at one of the Zoom Town Hall meetings on Saturday, May 1st or Saturday, May 15th. I look forward to seeing you there where we can talk about this. I hope you are as engaged by the report as I am that it excites your imagination, is considered in your prayers, and whets your appetite for further conversation as we strive to embrace new life and new beginnings. Happy reading. I hope to hear from you soon.